Good to go. Okay. Well, good afternoon. My name's Luke Creasy and I'm, the, and I'm the Labor candidate for Melbourne. I'm proud to be here with Bill Shorten, the leader of the Labor Party, and Catherine King, our Shadow Health Minister. Um, today's announcement is a really important one. As a secondary school teacher, I know that when there's the diagnosis of a serious illness like cancer, there is a huge amount of stress. And the stress that people are facing in that scenario should not be about being able to afford treatment, it should be about being able to get well. So this is an important announcement to ensure that people going through a really hard time in their lives are able to have fairness, decency and dignity through their illness. Bill. Thanks, Luke. That was Luke Creasy, Labor's candidate running in the federal seat of Melbourne. First of all, I'd just like to thank the staff of the Royal Children's Hospital. Before we get to our announcement, today's you know, run for the kids' day where Victorians and Australians get to say thank you to the staff here and its families who've had the lived experience of the almost miraculous work, the emotional support that they get from the RCH, just get to say thank you. But I'm here also because almost the very worst thing that can happen to a parent is to discover that their child has cancer. I can't think of anything more challenging. That's when these families and these precious kids need all the help they can get. And that's what we're doing today in continuation of what I said on Thursday night in outlining Labor's vision for standing alongside Australians who are diagnosed with cancer. We've said on Thursday that one in two Australians by the time they're 85 will be diagnosed with cancer. There are 750,000 Australians living with cancer, with a diagnosis of cancer. Hundreds of thousands will get treatment this year. 145,000 Australians will be diagnosed with cancer this year. 50,000 will pass. But when it comes to kids, it almost seems too hard to contemplate. So Labor has announced that we will provide six million extra scans, bulk build. Because one thing I don't think Australians always appreciate is that when you get a diagnosis of cancer, the system isn't free. It's a good system, better than many other parts of the world, but it's not free. And the out-of-pocket costs of a diagnosis of cancer can be devastating. And the last thing that a family needs to do is to worry about how they pay the bills. So we've said six million scans will be bulk bill, additional, will, be, will be bulk bill. We've said three million, three million visits to specialists will now be bulk billed, so the hundreds of dollars of cost go to zero. And then what we've been announcing uh, on Friday is greater support for capital infrastructure so that the facilities in our public system are available to treat people with that diagnosis, and in the regions in particular. Because one of the most disturbing statistics, I think, is that depending on how much money you have, depending on where you live, the cancer mortality numbers can go up. Not because of the cancer, but because of where you live or how much money you have. But, and yesterday we announced some more services, uh, more nurses in our community to help people with the diagnosis, uh, from uh, prostate cancer to metastatic cancers. As part of the package we outlined on, on uh, Thursday night, though, I'm pleased to say that today it's about kids with cancer. 1,700 kids will get a diagnosis this year. 1700. And the ripple effect of that, we've had the chance to walk around amazing wards talking to just amazing staff and amazing families, but you can't disguise the anxiety and the worry. Now there's some great services doing incredible work to help kids and families, to back up just as important as the, the surgery and the treatment, frankly. And I talk about canteen, talk about the Children's Cancer Foundation, I talk about camp quality. So Labor's going to provide a, a package of support for the services to back up the capital investment, to back up the out-of-pockets challenge. We want to support the services who are supporting the families and supporting the kids. We're going to hear from Catherine King in the moment, who will make an excellent health minister if we get elected. We're going to hear from her and we're going to hear from the services themselves. But 
canteen, I had the chance to talk to our youth advocates, young people advocates, who've been through the been through the battle, been through the ordeal, and they just help emphasise that this is a smart use of a very modest amount of money, frankly. What we're doing isn't something which deserves special praise. This is what governments should do, help people, help people first. Uh, camp Quality, they're going to have the opportunity under what we're announcing to provide support in the regions from Port Lincoln to Townsville to Orange. What happens is that you get a lot of people in the bush come to the cities, they get the good support here, then they go back to their own communities and they're not, they don't get the same service and support. So you're sort of okay and then all of a sudden you're left to yourself. And Camp Quality does a great job. And as for the uh, Children's Cancer Foundation, you know, the work which is being done, for example, at the University of Melbourne, at the Peter Mac, at here and, and of course Monash University with the Hudson Institute, this is world class, world class. I said on Thursday my vision for our healthcare system is to be the best in the world. I don't want to have the best tax loopholes in the world. I don't, have, I don't want to have the softest touch for multinational taxation in the world. I want to have the best health care. And cancer affects everyone. You either have a diagnosis or someone in your family will. This is a universal issue. But on a day where uh, so many Melburnians have got out and run to raise money for families and for the hospital, this is another contribution to say that families going through the battle of their lives with their precious children, their precious young people, we've got your back, we'll stand alongside you. I'd like to hand over to Catherine now and we might hear from some of the services to talk about what they do and, and what, what this all means. Thanks Bill and it's great to be here with Luke Creasy, our <coughs> candidate here in the seat of Melbourne, alongside Peter Simone and uh, also Jeremy from the uh, Children's Cancer Foundation, Canteen and Camp Quality, here about this important announcement today. Now, imagine if you're a young person just starting your first year of university and you get a diagnosis of cancer and you have to work out how on earth are you going to manage that with your university education, getting, uh, you know, maybe you have to move back home with your parents. You're just at that start of your life when you really uh, be getting your independence or you're a 10 year old and you've spent 12 months here in the Royal Children's Hospital and you're then heading back home to Bendigo or to other regional centres and the sort of support services that you need. Well that's what Camp Quality and Canteen do. And Labor's Cancer Package wants to back these organisations, support these services. I first came across Canteen uh, a long time ago now and, and know a great deal about their youth cancer services. We funded them last in government in 2012. The funding for their youth cancer services runs out in 2020. These are the sorts of services that both Canteen and Camp Quality provide. And the Children's Cancer Foundation does terrific work in helping people to access clinical trials. We know the fantastic oncologists here in the Royal Children's Hospital really do great work providing cancer services, but they're also at the cutting edge. We know the best clinical evidence shows that for children with cancer, getting on a clinical trial is the best clinical pathway for them. And that's what the Children's Cancer Foundation wants to be able to do, not just here in Victoria, but across the country. So I couldn't be prouder of this 37.7 million dollar announcement today. I'm gonna to ask Peter from Canteen to say a few words and he'll hand over to Simone from Camp Australia and then we'll hear from Jeremy as well. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Catherine. This announcement for uh, young cancer patients is fabulous. We have some real certainty that we can take to young patients right across Australia and to the fabulous staff that work with them in major cancer centres across the country and they can go with that real confidence that there is a service there providing world-leading care. These services are on the map internationally for the standard of care they deliver to young cancer patients. Canteen is thrilled to, to get this news. We look forward, hopefully, to being able to take this forward. Uh, and we will see these young patients receiving fertility support alongside their treatment. They'll be receiving psychosocial support. And it will be of a world-class standard. So thank you and thrilled to get this announcement today. 
again, thank you, Mr. Short, and thank you, Catherine. This pledge is so welcomed by everybody at Camp Quality. It means for us that we currently have six family liaison coordinators who look after and support our families in metropolitan children's hospitals. We can now extend that support out to nine rural and regional areas of Australia, some of them Bill mentioned. So important that we have that continuity, continuity excuse me, of care, that we can take our support from metropolitan to regional and rural Australia and look after these kids and their families and continue that support. So they leave this really um, supportive metropolitan uh, environment and they can take that home with them. It will make a very big difference to our children and families in rural and regional Australia. So thank you very much. Uh, well, in May 2007, our three-year-old son, whose name is Linus, had a bump on his hand, which quickly developed into a lump. We got a biopsy, and we then received a chilling phone call telling us that we had an appointment with an oncologist. Uh, the diagnosis was a disease called rhabdomyosarcoma, and the next year involved trauma, heaped upon trauma for our little boy. I'm now the chairman of the Children's Cancer Foundation, uh, I consider that to be a great privilege. We are focused very heavily on bringing the best clinical research in the world to Australia. We have funded um, currently about $16 million in projects over the next few years. One of them is the creation of an endowed chair at Melbourne University in conjunction with this hospital and Peter Mack. Another is at the Hudson Institute of Medical Research with Monash University. These projects are going to generate a lot of clinical research activity and we believe we need another revenue stream, another income stream to sustain the sorts of projects that will be produced. So today uh, we are extremely excited at Bill's pledge of $10 million and our pledge is to use those funds to kickstart an endowment fund that will be one of the great endowments in Australia and will be solely for the benefit of children with cancer and clinical research to help them. What we want is a world where every child has the outcome that our son had. He is now aged 15, uh, he's healthy, he's happy, and his biggest issue is trying to get his head into the fridge without removing his headphones. <laughs> that's the sort of thing that 15-year-old children should be doing and worrying about, and that's the world we want. Thank you. Thanks, there we have it. When a child is sick, the family shouldn't end up poor. Happy to take questions on this or any other matter. Mr. Short, you've spoken before about electric vehicle charges starting for 8 to 10 minutes before the vehicle is fully charged. Do you know how much these charges cost? Before we get on to the government's uh, scare campaign on electric vehicles, are there any questions about children with cancer? Okay, if there aren't. Listen, on electric vehicles, this government, is, they're so addicted to scare campaigns, they're even scaring you about their own policies. You may not be aware, but I am. Josh Frydenberg said on the 12th of January last year, he said that by 2000, and, uh, in the near future, there'll be, by 2025, there'll be 230,000 electric vehicles and he said he expected that by 2030 there will be over a million electric vehicles. Now don't take my word for it, take the Treasurer's word for it. What we're doing is we're enunciating a policy which says we want to make it easy for electric vehicles to be used in Australia by creating a network of charging stations. But Mr Frydenberg didn't stop there, he also uh, said that Backing in electric vehicles would deliver a good economic dividend. Correct. And he said it would be good for the climate. So this government never, let a, never, never missed an opportunity to have a scare campaign, even if it is one which they actually support, which is the expansion of electric vehicles. By 2050, in all seriousness, it's projected there'll be two billion electric vehicles around the world. What Labor has said is that by 2030, we would like to encourage to see that half of the new car sales are electric vehicles. That doesn't mean the government's going to go around in 2030 and confiscate someone's ute. Now let's skip the scare campaigns. And in terms of the technical specifications of how long it takes to charge an electric vehicle, that depends on 
the technology of the charging station, it depends on how flat the battery is. Do you know how much these charges, charging stations cost? Well, the cost is coming down. For what we've projected is uh, that with $100 million from federal labour, because we've got this great vision. We understand that on our national highways, if we can help incentivise the installation of charging stations, then more people will want to buy electric vehicles and then the world will start selling us cheaper electric vehicles. Uh, so we've, uh, we, we recognise that they're uh, of a cost of about a uh, million to two million dollars per charging station, but fine. On cost, can you tell us what the cost is of your uh, carbon burden scheme and how is it going to affect the uh, manufacturing industry? Is it going to uh, jobs? Oh, this poor old government. I can, I'll tell you, and I'll answer questions on cost in a moment, but understand where the question's coming from. This government wants to run another scare campaign on taking real action on climate change. This government is broken. It is simply broken. They can't come up with a climate change policy, so what they want to do is scare you about anyone who does. So let's go to some cost numbers. Do you know the cost of natural disasters last year in Australia? 18 billion dollars. Now this government might say that breaking the world records, on, breaking sorry, national records on temperature, that means nothing. Well it means a lot to everyday Australians. So the Insurance Council, uh, the property industry all know that we've got to start taking steps about mitigation to deal with climate change. So there's a cost to inaction. There's also all the jobs we miss out. Because of our plans to invest in renewable energy, we estimate there's another 70,000 jobs to be created, which won't be created if the current knuckle-draggers of the, of the anti-climate change brigade were to retain uh, power after the next election. In terms of costings on industry, I spent a lifetime working in cement and steel and aluminium, you know, the emissions-intensive trade-exposed sector representing workers there. We'll work with those sectors, we'll consult them on how we roll out our measures. And the ultimate answer on cost, I suppose, goes back to Malcolm Turnbull. Malcolm Turnbull, and indeed the current Prime Minister and current Treasurer, wanted us all to vote for something called the National Energy Guarantee. Listen, we didn't think it was world's best practice, but we didn't think it was the stupidest idea the coalitions had. That, that, that has got a lot of competition for that sobriquet. But what we did say is we'll use their structure, the National Energy Guarantee. So when this government wants to run around and scare people and say that Labor's plan on climate change is all bad and doom and gloom, you know, yada yada, whatever stuff they usually scare each other with. What I say is that we're just using the government scheme. We're just using the government scheme. We're extending it to more companies, from about 140 to 250 companies, but we're just using the government scheme. It's not a tax. The real question to be asked is, what sort of nation are we leaving to our kids? Two million Australian households have already invested in solar. No doubt they would have probably been asking some of the same questions that we got asked about electric vehicles just then in 2007. Did you know in 2007 there were only 7,000 Australian households who had solar on their rooftops? No doubt then there was some liberal or conservative writing that solar will never catch on, it's far too expensive, it's going to wreck the economy. You know, 12 years on, 2 million households. That's why we're going to help roll out solar battery storage systems. I want Australians to have the best technology in the world. And this government's had the chance. They've had six years to lower power prices and to act on climate change, and they've done neither. And if this government really is serious about climate change, Malcolm Turnbull would still be Prime Minister of Australia, but he's not. Is the Prime Minister doing anything wrong by not announcing an election day so far? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what goes through the mind of the government most days. I think they think they're getting some marvellous tactical advantage. Everyone knows that there's got to be an election on a Saturday in May. But somehow the government thinks they're getting some massive advantage not to. I'd put it this way. This government wants to spend tens of millions of dollars on TV advertising to pump up their own tyres. That's why they're buying time, so they can spend some more of Australians' money to pump up their own tyres. If they've got some spare money in Treasury, they should be spending it on services for kids with cancer. Wouldn't it be good if today Mr Morrison said, well, I'll still let you know in the fullness of time when I have the election, but I promise Australia I will not spend another cent on TV advertising, and all that money that he'll spend pumping up his own tyres and his government tyres, wouldn't it be good if he surprised the nation and said, no more TV ads by the government, I'm going to spend it all on the cancer treatment of kids.
we can only live in hope. Mr. Shorten, with some of the mental health and heart disease groups that are a bit put out about the focus on cancer, is labour funding acute care at the expense of preventative care? No, and I've spoken to uh, Professor McGorry, and we've got great policies on mental health. And I know in the flurry of our announcements on Thursday night, it could have been missed by some in the media on Friday. We put out a statement about our mental health commitments. And we're also backing in. I mean, the good thing about us in health is if you want to get a job done in health, you get Labor to do it. So we're backing in a massive package for GPs. We've made significant announcements on mental health. We're also going to help fund some of the cuts that have happened to hospitals. Did you know in Victoria alone, Tessa, that in this state, $183 million has been cut from hospitals? That's not the Labor way. And this election will be simply about one proposition for me. Do you want better health care, better hospitals, better treatment of out-of-pocket costs of fighting cancer, or do you want bigger tax loopholes and more scare campaigns? The choice is yours. And other conditions hope for the same type of funding as cancer? Under a Labor government, you're always going to get a better deal on health care. We're not going to cut the hospitals. We are going to tackle out of pockets. We wouldn't have frozen the Medicare rebate for five years. The other thing is we can pay for our promises. This government would rather see a property investor maintain a tax subsidy and negative gearing to buy their sixth new premise, get a tax subsidy, than properly fund some of the services we're talking about today. Politics is about choices. The most important thing in politics, in my opinion, is your family and your health care. Labor understands this, and we're going to prioritise that. Mr. Sean, Very last question. As I've said in a number of interviews, I do think that uh, any parent who took their children to a war zone is a shocker. Not worth the title parent. But the kids didn't do this. So, you know, I do think we need to work with families to make sure the kids are not the uh, collateral damage of uh, the, the shocking thinking of the parents. And that extends to wives as well? Well, you've got to get all the circumstances, don't you? That's why we'll talk to our security agencies. So would you separate kids from parents? Would you leave the kids there? No. OK. Well, we'll work with that with the kids, that's right. I think you answered your own question and I thought I it was a good... You. No, I just said I agreed with your answer. I think it was a good answer you gave. Sorry, that's good. Yeah, well, uh, Penny Wong and I have already issued statements about Brunei's latest laws discriminating against gay people and other minority groups. Uh, we think this issue should be raised at the Commonwealth. I'm not going to prejudge what the Commonwealth does, but uh, certainly the laws which have been enacted recently are unacceptable, full stop, and we've got to try and change them. Thanks, everybody. Thank See you, you later, and thanks to the hospital Thank for having you. us. Thank you.